it's good. Right, do you want to give me, do you want to tell me what you have for breakfast and we'll get some level off you? Okay, I had a coffee and I wish I had some toast, but there's no time for eating in my brain. <laughs> oh, you are so Hollywood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Liquid, liquid breakfast yeah. all the time. Darling, there's no time for eating, we need to shoot. Um, right then, I've, I've got us rolling. Um, give us your name and the production company just so I've so, so got it for the take. Okay, my name's Ross Beamish and we're Breakwater Media and Film. So, how did this film come about then? Well, a few months ago I was invited by a producer in Miami to join in an in international collaboration of filmmakers from around the world, of everyone from uh, New York to Bogota to Miami to right here in Gloucester. And, uh, hang, 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 just, just one moment. Miami, yeah. Bogota, Gloucester, Okay. You know, it's it it doesn't necessarily trip off the tongue as being being an international centre of filmmaking. No, sure thing. But um, this is a great region to be in. It's a beautiful place. Uh, there's lots of creative people out there. And okay, we're not say the London and the Paris of, or even the LA of the filmmaking world. But mm. there's plenty of people out there, young people especially, who want to be making good quality films. Um, and I can tell you for one, I know for a fact that the talent is growing and growing all the time. There's lots of opportunity to make film. Filmmaking now can be extremely cheap. I mean, you can make a film on your mobile phone if you want. Okay, mm. it won't be the super quality thing that you'd be churning out by Steven Spielberg, but it doesn't matter. It's all about the ideas and the skill sets of people, young people, making films. Mm. And uh, there's plenty of people in this region. So go back, go back to the, the, the getting contacted by, by a producer. Okay, well, this is the <laughs> beauty of the World Wide Web, of course. Um, YouTube is a fantastic thing. Um, in some ways it, it, it destroys filmmaking in the way that there's so much material being blown up on there that nobody gets to see it any longer. Mm. But the other way is that when you do get noticed, you do get noticed. So uh, a few years ago I was contacted by this filmmaker in Miami. She liked my stuff, I liked hers, we've been friends ever since. And she's got this idea where several different filmmakers from around the world join in in an international collaboration and do their own little film. Every film is completely different they all get amalgamated into the whole. Mm. Um, and the one thing that they share in the same is this, this one prop that travels throughout the film. Um, so what's, what's the prop? It's actually, uh, it's an item of value. Mm. Um, and the, the item of value is this book which appears in each of the films. So um, it's really the travels of this, this book through each of the director's visions. Mm. Now with ours, uh, I don't want to give the plot away because there's a twist and I want the audience to figure it out in their own time, but essentially it's the end of the story for the book. Yeah. Um, and ours is so completely different to the others, ours is essentially a, like a supernatural black comedy. Mm. Uh, the, uh, the other guys, they have uh, the Miami one is essentially a gangstery type mm. movie, then we have one that's a bit more of a ex existential one, I think that's in Bogota, <laughs> and then I think uh, I think there's a New York one that was a bit more of um, a romantic kind of thing. So there's a huge range there, and ours so, is right in the end. So, so what's the finished product going to, going to be like? I mean, is, is is this an absolute guarantee that you're going to be part of this finished product? Because the way that it's coming across, there, there was there was um, a well, there was a movie made a number of years ago about a, a um, yellow Rolls Royce. It was a 1960s classic with Omar Sharif in it. Um, and basically it was the, the sort of travels of this car through various different stories in a portmanteau way. Mm -hmm. I mean, does, does, does this mean that that's sort of taking on that idea as well? And, and it's, been, it's, it's been done before, but does this mean that you're automatically going to be part of the finished product? Well, ideally, yes. I mean, of course, nothing in this, this world, is, in filmmaking, is yeah. ever set. Uh, but the beauty of our film is that it can exist completely independently. And I've made a very big thing in the film about it being set in Gloucester, mm. in Gloucestershire. I mean, the primary location is actually just down the road, in the pub at the end of the road, uh, the England's Glory. Uh, they were fantastic. We couldn't have done it without them. Then we relocated to Cheltenham, uh, just at the foot of Pitville Park. Mm. And um, it's, it's such a huge contrast, but it's still very English. It's very Gloucester. And I wanted to make a big deal of that. 
Um, so essentially there's no guarantee, but it doesn't really matter if it doesn't because it's going to be a big success. I'm quite confident to say it would be the best one out of all of them. <laughs> and, uh, and, and yes... Um, You're not going to hold back, are you? No, no, no. You know, you know the, we had a great cast, a great crew. Um, everyone pulled out 110% on this. So, um, and I'm quite confident that we'll really nail it. We shot it to a very high quality mm. and um, I'm really confident that the script is good. Uh, the acting was good. The direction, of course, was great. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's th thing is when when like like when you're talking about the, the film industry, nothing is ever set in stone, um, and people have gone out with the best idea in the world, thinking that this is yeah. going to be absolutely genius, and people are going to flog to this, whether you've got a tiny little budget or a budget of multi millions. Yeah. I mean, we all remember 1941. You know, it's it, it, it's Steven Spielberg's only flop because he went out with it's just. I can do this without without thinking about it. Is there a danger in thinking, well, is there a danger in getting too excited about it because you never know until it's got in front of an audience? Exactly, and joking aside, I was saying about how great we were, it doesn't matter how great you are, it matters what the audience think. Mm. Because if your film doesn't have a life, it'll just sit on the shelf and, and rot, basically. Um, you, you're, you have to think about your audience. And you said about Steven Spielberg making that error, um, of course, another director, Quentin Tarantino, has been accused of making the error of just making films for himself. Mm. I guess he's at the level now where he, he, got, uh, he probably could do that and it wouldn't matter if he made a huge loss. But at our level, of course, we need to constantly think about the audience, which is why at each stage, be it the script writing or the shooting or the editing, or even when, when you come to screen it, mm. you've got to think about how the audience is going to enjoy it the best. And therefore, if this is a success, then hopefully it will go on further. Is, is there also a fine line because there are a number of feature films that, that um, people say have, have been completely neutered by the whole process of a test screen. So it's, it's, there's a fine line between taking into account what an audience thinks of it but also wanting to keep your own vision for it. That's very true and to be honest with you, um, it's not just the audience that can affect the way the director or the editor edits the film, it can just be opinions from your cast and crew. Mm. Um, in the filmmaking process, you're, you're, if you're not a strong director, then the actors can rule the roost and just destroy your original vision. So you have to be very careful on that. But at the same time, you, it, I think you just have to have the smarts to know when you're making the mistake. And that really just comes from experience. So like I was saying about young filmmakers in Gloucester and, and the local area, um, the one piece of advice I could do is just get out there and make film. It's so easy to do, it can be really cheap, really inexpensive. All you need is the time and the energy to do it. And just keep making them because the only way you'll know how to do it is from experience. You learn by your mistakes. So who are the people that inspire you? My favourite directors. Yeah. Uh, well, I love Oliver Stone. And, uh, God, they, they, God bless him, at least he has vision. Okay. <laughs> and uh, David, uh, David Fincher, I think, is fantastic. Oh, well. I had a horrible feeling you were going to say David Lynch then. I was, I, 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 uh, what's wrong with David Lynch? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have you me. seen Fire Walk With Me? I mean, come <laughs> on. I mean, really. I mean, it's, well, yeah. it's Stone and Fincher, very much sort of, sort of uber realism with sort of a fantastic edge to it as well. Right, but I also like the fact that they, um, they are pretty much no holds barred. They're very distinctive in their filmmaking approach. And uh, like you said before, we've got to think about the audience, but at the same time, a director doesn't necessarily have to be an auteur. Mm. but they do have to have a taste of them, otherwise they'd just be bland. And those guys are two that really stick out to me as being fantastic filmmakers. Two directors that have done two of my, most, my favourite films, really. Mm. I mean, I mean is, it, is, it, is it difficult for, for when you start making stuff and when, when you're a young filmmaker and you want to make, a, you, you want to make an impact, is, is there a terrible danger with your first couple of projects that actually it's going to be showing off? It's, it's like sort of jumping up and down at the back of the class going, look what I can do, Absolutely. rather than... You know, putting together a coherent product. Yeah, it's very funny because I went to um, I went to film school down in Bristol, and uh, not that this is indicative of the film school course, but I'm certain I've heard stories from many, many other film schools, and people come in um, at many, many levels uh, into this film school, but they all have this ego of, look mm. at me, I'm not a filmmaker. And when you're at film school, everybody on the crew is is at the same boat because you're all working to the same end but you have the, dir the director, the producer, the writer, all the way down to the runner and just the coffee maker. Okay? Mm. But essentially everybody is at the same level. Mm. The problem is the people at the top have this huge ego. 
And yes, uh, the chances of you making a groundbreaking film at film school are minimal. It's, I'm not going to say it's unprecedented, but yeah. I know for a fact that my, my entries there weren't as good as what I can do now. Mm. So yes, you do run a fine line. You need to um, really keep your ego in check, but just keep your eyes and your ears open and learn from your mistakes. That's really the key. Mm. Wasn't um, John Carpenter's first movie a film school? Probably quite well, movie. Quite likely, and Spielberg, you said before, and uh, Lucas, of course, uh, yeah. with TH... Uh, THX1 Vernon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The classic, the classic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, THX, um, the thing you mean, Bob, what's it? But uh, uh, nonetheless, that was, that was a fantastic film of his, and um, one that he did at film school. Mm. Um, the disappointing thing is, he's then not been able to follow that up. <laughs> oh, he hit his peak early. Yeah, um, yeah, far too early, really, right. um, and resulted in the last three Star Wars, but we're not even going to mention those. Um, what's next, then? Okay, what's next? Uh, we've got a great many productions in the line. I really want to make a big deal about shooting in this area. I'd, like mm. I said before, I think Gloucester and Gloucestershire, in the local area, has so much talent and such a beautiful area to be shooting in. There's lots of material to be shot here, both in fiction and in documentary. Gloucester's a place with a huge history, um, much of it hidden from the public eye. Uh, and I think that there's great, great potential there for, for documentary to be made. So I'll be looking at that. Then maybe we could do some spin-offs from this film. This film is only a very short one. It'll be about seven minutes long, but it's really a taster of where these characters can go. Mm. And um, let's see. I mean, essentially, I just want to build a great media base for us here. Um, we're involved in several groups of other filmmakers, local and slightly wider field. Um, we just we just need to keep the ball rolling though. But I very much encourage your listeners to come down and have a little viewing of our mm. screen. Yeah, when can we see it? Well, it should be ready uh, out of post in the next couple of months. Out of post, get you. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Grab the lingo. <laughs> now I know what I'm talking about. And uh, we'll be doing our first screening at the pub that we shot at, the England's Glory, because why not? That's where yeah. it was. And... Um, you're all welcome to come down and have a look. Hopefully you'll like it. But uh, don't give me a call and ask me what it's all about because I'm not going to tell you. You've got to come and have a look. Ross, thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. Cracking. Thanks. That'll do. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks.